Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, July 9th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local NWS office for the best information for your location. Well, we have a new tropical storm named Fay right here off of the North Carolina coastline, just east-northeast of Cape Hatteras. A little bit of an odd storm, especially for July. It's not too unusual to have a storm form in this region uh, of the southwestern Atlantic, but they're normally scooting off toward the northeast into the middle of the northwest Atlantic and away from the U.S. Fay's a little different. It's actually moving basically northward and is going to bring impacts directly uh, to the mid-Atlantic and southern New England coastlines from the Delmarva up through southern New England specifically rainfall and the potential for some flash flooding due to a few inches of rain in spots over the next uh, couple of days and uh, taking a look at this today this has really gotten organized compared to what it was this morning we've had a pretty sloppy system until this point where you can kind of see what the leftover circulation was a very elongated structure in general the original center of the system this morning was actually this one back here farther south off of uh, Cape Lookout and you can see the remnant there and so our new center is actually up east northeast of Cape Hatteras and it's within the northeastern side of this larger elliptical circulation uh, within which the center is now embedded. If we take a closer look uh, at that uh, center up here you'll see it spinning a uh, little bit bare here with most of the convection on the northeastern side of the center now it's this convection that spawned this spin we had our original center here a bunch of convection went off to the northeast and helped to generate a vorticity and helped to cause this low level spin to develop and we still have some shear coming out of the west. You can see some of these upper level clouds from the daytime convection over North Carolina streaming left to right, which is what's pushing these thunderstorms off to the east. So once this spin formed underneath the convection, it's now moving off to the left away from this convection and the two are now becoming separated. So now we have a new center with convection to the northeast once again, but now farther north from where it was this morning. So how is this going to evolve over the next uh, overnight hours and into tomorrow morning? Well, we've got both track and intensity to discuss. Regarding intensity, the big thing here is that the storm is now moving north of the warm Gulf Stream water, which runs off the North Carolina coast and the northeastward like this. And we can see that on the SST map uh, where Fay is now located here. And this tongue of very warm water, where it, which has some po supported convection on the northeast side today, Faye is now moving out of that uh, northward into this area of sub 26 degrees Celsius water, uh, so cooler than 70 Fahrenheit, about 24, 25 degrees Celsius. This is kind of cool compared to the Gulf Stream, but it is still warm enough to support some cape, some instability in the atmosphere. And so this does not mean convection is going to shut off. It's not quite as favorable, but we are going to see convection uh, right through landfall time, assuming that this gets ashore somewhere between the Delmarva and Long Island, which it's likely to. And so this is possibly going to strengthen a little bit on its way toward the coast, and we could see some further organization. And uh, we're likely to see continuing pressure falls, according to most models, as this moves toward the north. And it already has winds of about 45 miles per hour, not likely to get much higher than that. NHC says they could get up to about 50. It's probably about right. We're not going to see big wind from this, and those, those maximum winds are only going to occur at the beaches. But gusts above tropical storm force, about 40 miles per hour, will be possible near the center of this thing and just to its east and north uh, when it approaches the coast. Now as far as which section of the coast will get impacts, uh, the storm is going to more, more or less move toward the north overnight tonight and tomorrow on water vapor imagery here we can see a broad ridge extending from New England out over the northwestern Atlantic and this is what's uh, steering the system more into New England and the mid-Atlantic rather than out to sea as we're used to seeing with storms like this. Uh, we see this broad westerly flow to the west of the storm, which we mentioned with the shear pushing this convection off toward the east. Uh, but this flow does actually switch from westerly to more out of the south in this part of the mid-Atlantic. And we're starting to see some of the cirrus outflow expand north-northwestward to the north of Fay. And so some of this convection on the east side of Fay may start rotating around more toward the north side and maybe even northwest side 
as we approach landfall. And so this rainfall, although it's to the right of the track right now, even if Faye takes a track just offshore of the Delmarva and New Jersey, we could see some pretty hefty rain totals even to the left of the track and near the center of the track uh, Friday and Friday night. And so the potential for flash flooding does exist here and rain is uh, the primary concern with the system. Uh, whether this extends very far into the Delmarva is still somewhat of a question, and we have a few things governing the track during the next 6 to 12 hours that are a little uncertain and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, the first is the fact that the vortex is heavily tilted, so this is uh, the radar out of Moorhead City, North Carolina from Mark Nissenbaum's excellent site at FSU, and the surface center is, is right about here. You can sort of see the northeast wind there, southwest wind here in the lower levels, and this is where the center is located. Located. But what you'll notice is a very vigorous spin over here where the convection is. This is the upper level or mid-level center. This vortex is tilted very strongly with height uh, so that it leans toward the northeast as you go higher up in the atmosphere. Now this kind of thing here is what spawned our new center in the first place this morning where you had mid-level rotation that then burrowed its way down to the ocean surface due to all this convective activity and caused a new center to form underneath. That's what we have here now. This process could repeat itself again and the reason that could matter for the short-term track is because if this mid-level part of the center burrows down again to the surface and forms a new vorticity maximum or spin maximum, then it may immediately start rotating around the original center which is currently here and get invected quickly to the left for a few hours before turning back toward the northeast and behaving correctly again. And so a quick little nudge to the left just before it gets to the Delmarva, I've exaggerated it here, it would be more like a subtle nudge as this comes up toward the Delmarva such that you know, we'll have to watch to see if this tries to sneak left before turning up the New Jersey coastline or into New Jersey itself. So we're going to have to keep an eye to see on how much rain and perhaps some coastal winds and coastal flooding could impact the Delmarva overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. You should expect at least heavy rain to start spreading into the region overnight. And if you're on the coastline, be aware for some gusty winds and potential for coastal water uh, being pushed up against the shoreline by these southeasterly winds. Uh, rain is uh, definitely more certain as we go into New Jersey and New England, where again this is going to come up and bring a swath of at least a few inches of rain to this region, and we see this on the rainfall forecast from NHC and WPC showing this darker green, which is in excess of two inches uh, throughout most of New Jersey and uh, on into southern New England, where again some flash flooding is possible, and that's the primary impact from this system. This is the official forecast showing more or less a, a northward motion overnight tonight. Again, getting very close to the New Jersey coastline. Whether it deviates far enough left to bring more significant rain and gusty winds to the Delmarva, it's going to be a track it overnight kind of thing. It's not really anything to worry about too much, but be prepared again for rains and gusty winds. That's really all this is. And uh, this will be coming up uh, during the afternoon tomorrow past the Jersey coastline and then into New England overnight Friday and into Saturday. And after that, dissipating as it heads into Canada. A little bit of a funky storm for this time of year and really any time of year having something forming this far north and then uh, strengthening as it moves into the mid-Atlantic. But fortunately, this is a rather weak storm. But be prepared for flooding as that can always be a concern regardless of how weak something looks or seems. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.